All right, well, welcome back. Uh, we have at least two more videos. And the next two videos are really at the heart of what is gonna happen in this learning experience and what is expected of you. So this video will show you, it will expose you to a, an ethical framework. And then the second video will take that ethical framework and it will apply it to the area of, or the moral um, ethical issue of euthanasia. So let me share my screen with you. And the first thing we want to do is we want to look at what are the criteria for making ethical decisions. Again, I will be providing you with a framework. You may choose to use this framework or you may choose to tweak it. And I will show you in a minute where you may want to tweak it. But we're looking at what are the criteria for making an ethical decision. And I'm going to lay out a framework. And this is a suggested framework. You'll notice that this framework uh, will parallel our 8S process. And so that's what you see in the, uh, in the first one, you see step one, select an ethical issue, and then in parentheses, select. That's the first S of the 8S or eight step process. Uh, so I just put that there. And so it's something that's familiar and that will help you think through and remember this framework maybe more easily. All right, so when, so here again, this is a framework that I have established that I use personally for making ethical decisions. So for your project, step one is select an ethical issue. And so we'll see in the next video that the ethical issue we have selected will be the issue of euthanasia. So using the criteria of what constitutes an ethical issue, recall that, right? Uh, you want to select an ethical issue that others need you to address in your context. Again, this should be something that's real life and personal to you. So it could be an area that you're very passionate about. In our church, people are very passionate about the issue of abortion. And so they would want to know, how do I make ethical decisions in that area? And this framework will help them to do that. It, or it may be something that's very particular to, your, uh, to a need that you have, but you want to select an ethical issue. That's step one. Step two is you need to then uh, search, right? That's what we learned in the eight step process. And that means you need to gather the facts. Okay. And when we say, so we're talking about gathering the facts, you want to gather as much information about the issue as become, as is possible. So in some cases, once the facts have been gathered, it becomes really evident that actually there's no ethical dilemma at all, or you may gather the facts and it'll help you to see how complicated the, the ethical issue really is and that you need to be able to isolate and identify the different elements that are making it complicated. So you wanna gather the facts in the situation. And again, I will flesh this out in the next video. Number three is you're gonna to wanna to determine, once you've gathered those facts, you're gonna to wanna to sift right through the, those facts and you're gonna to wanna to determine what are the actual ethical issues? What are the, what are the, the, the biblical imperatives that are being violated or that are in conflict with one another. Um, and you want to be able to define those very clearly. And so you have to ferret out and you have to determine, okay, here's one of the ethical issues. Here's another ethical issue because God commands that we do this and he commands that we do this, but they seem to be uh, at odds, okay? So you wanna to try to figure out what are the actual issues. And then you're gonna to want to then apply the Bible. This is step four. And when we say that, apply the Bible, what we mean is what are passages or commands or principles within scripture that relate to the ethical issue that we're talking about? And so you want to start big, right? You know, so if you're looking at euthanasia, euthanasia goes way beyond just an individual and whether they'll, they'll take their own life, but it, it looks way beyond that to just the killing of people in general, is there ever a justified killing? If there is, what is that? If there's not, what is that? And so you want to you want to begin to apply the Bible by looking broadly, and then we want to narrow our focus to the individual commands. A great place again for us as we're thinking about the Bible study is the character of God. What's the moral attributes of God that we see? We went through those, and then second is are there specific commands or themes in the Bible that deal specifically with that issue? Okay, the fifth step. And this is where you may want to separate uh, out and instead of putting apply graded absolutism, you may say, you know what, I'm not going to do that. 
I am going to put non-conflicting absolutism, that God will always intervene. And, and that is completely fine. And you may view me and say, wow, you know, like you put absolute graded absolutism as your step number five and not the other one where there's non-conflicting absolutism shows that you are actually lacking in faith in God, okay? And so I will take that on by myself. And so, but this is where you may want to tweak it. I am choosing to put graded absolutism because I do believe that God has commanded things. For example, in Exodus, where we see that the midwives very clearly were told to kill the Hebrew babies. When they go to report to Pharaoh, they very clearly lie. Um, now, they're not, they're not commended for lying, so I'm not saying that. Um, but there is a conflict there, and they chose to choose life over lying, and I think that that is how I would have actually approached the situation also. You can also look at the issue of, um, uh, what's her name? Um, goodness, I keep thinking of Tamar, but it's not Tamar. It's, uh, goodness, I'm, I'm doing this as a recording. All right, she hides the spies, right? She puts them on the roof, and, uh, and what happens is they come and they say, hey, are the spies here? And she says, nope, they've, they've run off, they're gone. And she's lying because they're right there. And so again, she did that to preserve their life. She does that to preserve her family's life. Um, and so that is where graded absolutism would go. Now, if you hold the position that Betsy does, then you would remove graded absolutism and you would put in um, non-conflicting absolutism. All right, the sixth one is then you want to sort out the options, okay? And you're going to begin them to be confronted with various options that could take place. And you want to think through from the craziest option, which you know is not really an option, but you want to lay them all out there so you can actually get a, a, a picture of what are possibilities, because that will help you to understand what, what the possibilities are and what the impossibilities are, right? But it'll help you to understand how other people might be thinking toward this issue. And you may discover while you're doing that, that something that you didn't notice actually comes to the surface. So you want to list your options and in our eight step process, that is be the sorting. Okay, then you're gonna to want to compare. This is the summarize and synthesize part. You wanna compare the options of the biblical framework that you have created uh, and that come out of that. And you want to say, okay, well, this is an option and this is an option and this is an option. And then you're gonna to have to continue to think, well, why is this an option? And what makes that a good option? And what's, why is this an option? And why is that a good option? And you do that for all of them. And so you need to compare and then say, okay, well, I think this one actually has more merit than this one. And actually this one, now that I look at it, really doesn't make much sense at all. And then finally, you're gonna to get to consider the consequences, right? Because every option you choose will have consequences. Uh, whether you, you choose the non-conflicting absolutism and you say that God will, he'll come in and he'll, he'll meet me somewhere and maybe this person won't die or maybe they will die. Well, there's a consequence either way. Or if you do the graded absolutism, there is a consequence when I lie, then there, there is a consequence of my lie, all right? Or if I choose this option, there's, a, there's set these sets of consequences. If I choose this option, there's these sets of consequences. And so we're gonna match in this sense, pragmatism with faith, and that takes us to the ninth step, is at some point we do have to make a decision. And it cannot be a, just a merely pragmatic choice, okay? Pragmatism separated from faith is not what we're after. We're looking at, I've looked at all the options and I believe this is the best one. That's a pragmatic decision, but I believe that that is therefore what God wants me to do. And so I've made the final decision then to do this. Um, and that is the process by which you go to applying an, an ethical framework to making a decision. You go from the selection all the way through this process to where you finally make a decision. And so I hope this has been very helpful to you. And I realize that uh, each of you may differ on step five, and that's fine. But you need to do something that your conscience will allow you to do. And if other people disagree with you, you want to extend grace, right? We have freedom of conscience at that point. And so we want to be gracious towards them and not condescending or anything else. So again, I hope this is really helpful. 
In our next video, we're going to flesh all this out with the issue of euthanasia. Thanks.